Hey everybody, my name is Jennifer. This is Metatron is speaking. Today we have a video on how to set boundaries. This is from Archangel Metatron. So he is giving me all the points to go over. He's he's giving me everything. So let's just start from the beginning on this one. It's going to be involved. So who needs better boundaries, right? Probably all of us. This is not something that we were taught how to do as children. I mean, maybe somebody somewhere was taught this, but I don't know anyone who was. We don't have role models who really know how to effectively and still politely set boundaries. So if we haven't seen it before, if no one taught us how to do it, this is why we don't know how to do it. So Metatron is stepping in. He's going to be our teacher. So here are some obvious signs that you are not setting boundaries. One, you feel chronically taken advantage of in certain situations. So emotionally taken advantage of, financially or physically. Number two, you say yes to please others at your own expense. Ugh. I have done that many times. Number three, you are not getting your needs met because you tend to fear conflict and give in to others. Next one, your fear of being rejected or abandoned leaves you accepting less than you deserve. And the last one he gave to me, engaging in people-pleasing behaviors in order to be liked and to receive approval. That is the pit of despair that I fall into all the time. Um, so these are just some examples of maybe the, the most obvious ways that you might not be setting boundaries. There are plenty more, but he's got to give me a limited amount. So why set boundaries? Boundaries allow you to feel safe and respected. Setting boundaries means, means that you engage with others in a healthy way that does not leave you feeling resentful, exhausted, or physically hurt. So if you're coming away from interactions with your friends and your coworkers and your boss and your mother and you're feeling resentful or exhausted or, God forbid, physically hurt, you have boundaries that need to be set because you have boundaries that are being stepped over and you are being damaged from it. So when should we use boundaries? There are are way more examples than what I'm going to give. These are just some of the larger ones. So there should be boundaries around your sexuality. There should be boundaries around your time. There should be boundaries around your money. There should be boundaries around your emotions. And lastly, around your physical safety. So these are some of the big ones. All right. So how do we start setting boundaries? What, how do we get there? First thing you have to do is you have to know what your boundaries are. You're going to have to start paying attention to yourself. You have to pay attention to how you feel to know when something is going on that makes you uncomfortable. So you have to bring awareness into this. If something makes you feel unsafe or stressed or anxious or angry, that is your body telling you that someone has crossed one of your boundaries. Whether you have verbalized it or not, you still have boundaries that you're well aware of. Well, maybe unconsciously. But if somebody does something and it results in you getting physically injured, 
you're aware that that is something that you don't want to have happen and, and that should be a boundary, whether you've verbalized it yet or not. So you need to start becoming aware of what your boundaries are. Number two, you need to value yourself. You need to value your emotions and your safety and your well-being and your happiness enough to do something about this. And what you need to do about this is communicate your needs. So one, learn what you want your boundaries to be. And two, we're going to have to start verbalizing them. For the first one, I can't tell you what your boundaries are because everybody is different. Some of us are going to say, hey, this is what I can tolerate. And I absolutely cannot. This is a deal breaker. Like this has to be my boundaries. And other people could care less about whatever that item is. So we're each different. We also each have the right to change our boundaries either as the relationship changes. So maybe you have certain, um, maybe you have certain boundaries around your sexuality in the beginning of a relationship that maybe you no longer want to have later on in the relationship, or maybe it's something else that you just change your mind on and you have the absolute right to change your boundaries at any time. The whole point is that you need to verbalize it because nobody can read your mind. Nobody knows what they are unless you say what they are. Okay, so let's do some, I'm gonna do some general examples and some specific examples of setting a boundary so we can start getting a feel for this. So the, a general example of setting a boundary is saying no. Somebody asks us for something from us, financially, time-wise, emotionally. And if it's something we are not equipped to give or are not ready to give, do not want to give, we need to be able to verbalize that. So I'm going to give you some specific examples. So let's say your boss wants you to work over the weekend. So this is your boss demanding your time, right? And you don't want to give, I'm assuming you would not want to give your boss your weekend. So something you could specifically say back. I'm sorry, but I can't commit to working on that project over the weekend. I appreciate you thinking of me and having confidence in me. That's it. I'm sorry, but I can't commit to working on that project over the weekend. I appreciate you thinking of me and having confidence in me. Do you see how that response doesn't have to give a reason? You don't need to give like a long explanation. You don't need to give any reason why. You just need to communicate that you're not going to be doing it. So I didn't have to explain myself. I just had to be clear that I can't commit to it. And that is sufficient. So let's pretend that you used a language like this with like a family member or a friend, somebody who would feel maybe brave enough to push back on you a little bit afterwards. Um, so if you, if somebody asks you to do something, your friend is like, hey, can you help me set up for this party? And you're like, you know, I'm sorry, I can't commit to doing that. And if they say, well, why not? You know, they, they're pushing you further on it. You can just say, it's just not feasible for me. Same thing. It's just not feasible for me. You don't have to give a reason. You just have to communicate that you cannot do it. So when you are setting a boundary, it's important that you stand your ground with it, that you say it, that, that you mean it when you say it, so that if somebody keeps pressuring you to move that boundary, that you hold to that boundary. You are reclaiming your power 
and you are loving yourself when you are doing this. Okay, so let's practice saying no to a different situation. And we're going to kind of do a, a couple of these with the saying no because I think it's one of the major problems so many of us have. So, example number two a friend invites you to a social event. That sounds nice, but let's say you just don't want to go for whatever reason. It does not even matter what the reason is. You can say, I would love to, but my plate is really full right now. I don't know if that phrase is going to translate the same in other languages, so you guys might have to make adjustments. I'm realizing this right now. But again, you don't need to explain. You just need one short sentence. Put that boundary in your life. And then you don't have to do things you hate doing and feel resentful to people for doing the things that you hate doing. You know, it's a bad cycle. Okay, general example of setting a boundary. So the first one was saying no. The second one is putting parameters around when and how something would be okay. So this isn't a flat out no, like the first one. This is a, yes, this is okay, but this is when and how it would be okay for me. So an example, if you're in an argument and it's escalating and you feel uncomfortable, the conversation is just getting uncomfortable. You can say, I would prefer to discuss this when we can be calmer about it. So your boundary is, I want, to, I want to talk about this conversation. This is an important conversation, but I'm only going to feel comfortable if we aren't angry when we're doing it. And that's a, that's a beautiful boundary to have. Another example. If you go out in a social setting with your spouse and your spouse wants to bring up something you don't want to talk about, maybe like a disagreement that you've had or something that you don't want to talk about in front of other people. You can say, I would like to talk about this, but now isn't the right time. So same concept of, <laughs> this is not the right place to be talking about this, but let's talk about this later privately. So let's talk about example number three. Your mother expects you to call her every day. And for some people, this might not be something that needs to have a boundary set on it. If it was me, that would be a lot of, that would be a large time demand. So for me, I would need a boundary on that. So you could say something like, while I enjoy talking to you, it feels like too much lately. So I need to limit our contact for the time being. I will reach out to you again when I'm ready. This one might be one of the harder ones to do. The I think probably the boundaries we need the most are the people closest to us. And those might be the most difficult to express. But it is such a worthy endeavor. It is such a good use of us feeling uncomfortable to set those boundaries and make our lives what we want them to be. I have a, another general example of setting a boundary. And this one is probably going to be the one that most of you use first if you're not used to setting boundaries. And this is buying yourself time if you are not ready to answer a question. So somebody springs a question on you, demanding time of you, demanding money of you, demanding who knows what of you, something that you're not necessarily prepared to give, but you don't know how to yet eloquently answer them in the moment. The next best thing you can do is buy yourself time to gather your thoughts. So as an example, if you're out with your sister or some other person, in this example, it's your sister, your sister asks you to spend a large amount of money with her on an expensive birthday gift for your father. So she's asking for a financial commitment. You can respond with saying, I'm not sure right now. Can I come to you once I've thought about it? I'm not sure right now. Can I come to you once I've thought about it? 
So you can use that phrase with everybody. So it buys you some time. Um, and it allows you to, to gather your thoughts and not have to answer in the pressure of the moment. So let's practice this one because you can use this with your boss. You can use this with your family. You can use this with your friends. You can use this with perfect strangers. It works for everybody. Um, so just to get you in the habit of using this one before you can get used to using the other ones, I'm going to ask you a question and I want you on your side of the screen to either out loud or in your mind answer this way. So your answer is going to be something to the effect of, I'm not sure right now. Can I come to you once I've thought about it? I'm not sure right now. Can I come to you once I've thought about it? So I'm going to give you a question and you're going to give that response. Hey, some of us are going out after work for some drinks. You're coming, right? And hopefully you said, I'm not sure right now. Can I come to you once I've thought about it? <laughs> and that buys you time to tell this person no. Or, I mean, if you wanted to, you could tell them yes. But truly, you want to say no. So buy yourself time to craft that answer. So let's talk about upholding your boundaries. Because I kid you not, the second you set a boundary with someone, I mean, if they are a beautiful and perfect human being, they're going to go, oh my God, thank you so much for telling me. I can't wait to do this for you to make sure that you are comfortable. Obviously, that's how we would love people to respond. But most people I know, my family members, whoever, most likely they're going to kind of react a little like, in their minds, they're going to feel like they didn't really mean that, right? And so they're going to keep pushing the boundary. They're going to keep pushing you to try to override the boundary that you just set. So most people are not used to respecting other people's time and space. So don't be surprised if you have to stand firm with a boundary and repeat it several times before it is understood and respected. If someone refuses to uphold a boundary of yours after being reminded a few times, that's your red flag to start evaluating the relationship, to see if this is someone that you maybe want to cut ties with. And let me tell you this. So if it's one of your family members, if it's one of your dear friends, then yes, I would say give them multiple chances to get this correct. If this is someone that you're going on a date with for the first time and you have a boundary and they don't understand that right off the bat, Run, out, go. Like So this is assuming, and the same thing with if this is like an interview you're on and the whoever's interviewing you or the boss or someone is not understanding a boundary, do not take that job. Get out of there. This is for upholding your boundaries is for, you know, Teaching the people around you what your boundaries are. And it's also for maybe certain situations you just have to teach strangers what's okay and what's not okay. And you have to reiterate it. But please do not seek a relationship with someone who right off the bat you can tell they don't understand what a boundary is. That's setting you yourself up for a problem. So let's go over this again. One, know your boundaries or learn your boundaries. Two, Communicate your boundaries. Three, uphold your boundaries when someone tries to disregard them. Four, consider cutting ties with those who do not uphold your boundaries. It may sound scary to set boundaries with people, but this is actually a way to reduce your anxiety and keep you feeling safe and comfortable. And this is for the long term. This is you know, it's a temporary discomfort while you are adjusting to the process because it's a new process, right? So that is the only reason it's uncomfortable. It's new. 
You're just not used to it yet. Once you have done it 30 times, it's not going to feel uncomfortable. You're just naturally going to do it. And that means over the long term, you're not going to feel anxious. You're not going to feel resentful. You're not going to feel angry. Isn't that what matters? That you feel better. That you are spending your time and your money and your body the way you want to be. Um, it's about taking back your personal power and having love for yourself. Archangel Michael, <laughs> who doesn't normally give me stuff, jumped in on this one. He said, if you want to know my opinion, it's good to set a lot of boundaries. Boundaries are communicating what you need and people who love you will want to know what those things are. Other people who don't have much love for you need the boundary to prevent them from harming you. You can't assume people know how to treat you. All of you think a little differently. So what's important to one person doesn't matter at all to another. You have to communicate your needs to give others the chance to adjust. Sometimes it takes a little practice on both sides. But you will understand each other better in the end and there will be more trust and more goodwill in that relationship. What I'm going to do, that's the end of Michael's quote. What I'm going to do, I created a crystal grid not too long ago on empowered communication. And so that crystal grid, the whole point was to assist you with having courage and personal conviction when you're going to communicate things and communicating things from your heart that are important to you. So that is the perfect crystal grid for this video. And so because of that, I'm going to include at the end of this video, a video of that crystal grid so that you can look at it so that you can have that extra support if you so desire. And that will give you that extra boost to start communicating these things that take personal power and they take communicating from your heart in order to set these boundaries that are so important. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the crystal grid. I want you to take a look at this grid. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how it's made, but really I'm just using up a little time so that you guys can have a moment to just look at this grid. When you look at this, do you feel it in your stomach? or in your chest, or in your throat, because those are the three colors that I've used in this. We've used the colors for the throat chakra, the solar plexus, and the heart chakra. The center stone is a quartz. It is an icosahedron, which has, ooh, I wanna say it has, 16 sides. I might be wrong. But at any rate, it's a sacred geometry shape, so it adds additional power to this. We have several different kinds of quartz points. We have yellow quartz points, we have yellow, green, and blue quartz points, and we have just blue quartz points. And then we also have this other kind that's yellow, green, and blue, but it's uh, smooth versus being the raw. So the yellow again, is going to incorporate the solar plexus energy, which is your personal power. The green is for the heart energy, and the blue is for your communication. So we're combining those three. There are some unique crystals on this grid, uh, mostly these little guys right here, these little tiny points. They are clear quartz that has like a little bit of a yellow tip at the end. They are called mango quartz points. They also have other names, but that's the easier one to remember. These were recently discovered in Colombia in just in October of 2020. So we're still getting an understanding of the energy of that stone because it is so brand new. But it does bring courage, and it encourages responsibility for your own happiness 
and it encourages you to reach your full potential. So that's why those are on here. We have 12 point quartz stars, which are sacred geometry shape, which add a lot of power to this. We have malachite hearts, these little green hearts. There's just three of them. And those are to assist you with recognizing and using your power. We have tiny pieces of pyrite next to the malachites. Those are for a spirit of boldness and assertiveness. We have little tiny turquoise chips. Those are to stabilize mood, bring inner calm, and enhance communication. So since we're dealing with communication, it's always best when you are communicating to come from a calm perspective, a calm point of view. So that's why we're using those. We have titanium coated black kyanite. This is one of the crystals that Metatron recommended for all of us for the month of March. So here it is. We are definitely using it whatever opportunity we can take. So how we're using it now is it's going to help cut ties that are negative and it can reduce misunderstandings and conflict. Also part of Metatron's crystals for the month of March is Celestite. We have very tiny, tiny, tiny pieces on this grid. We also have larger Sorry, bringing the camera out of focus. Larger clusters here to amplify the effects for the video. This assists with conflict resolution and bringing composure to turbulent emotions. And of course it calms the mind and helps you connect with angels and that is always a beautiful thing. I have brought three different Amanda Ellis sprays. I will list uh, her information in the description of this video. Um, and we're going to be using these to further activate this grid. So the very first spray, not sure if you can see it or not, but this is Archangel Michael. It's kind of hard to read. It says communication and safety. So it's that blue color. Not that. And of course we're utilizing the communication portion of that. These are the three... Uh, sprays of my many, many, many Amanda Ellis sprays that Metatron chose specifically for this grid. What makes these sprays especially wonderful, other than they smell like heaven, is that it's not just beautiful smelling water. It's not just water that has a beautiful combination of essential oils in it. These also have their own crystals that have been infused into this water. So that and I'm sure she's probably done some type of energy work with this water as well. So this is this is no ordinary water. No ordinary spray. You cannot read this at all because of the crazy shine. Okay, there we go. So this is the Archangel Metatron Golden Citrine Solar Plexus Chakra Spray. So we want to use that because we want to speak from we want to speak from the solar plexus. We want to speak from an empowered place. It's going to help for anyone who needs to set boundaries or, <laughs> um, or let be a little more courageous in their life. And then the last spray, probably also very difficult for you to read because it's a metallic label. Um, it's the Archangel Metatron Pink Lotus Spray. It's heart energy spray. So no, it's not the green color, but yes, it is pink, which is also a color associated with the heart chakra. And that's a beautiful, peaceful, relaxing, soothing, like you just feel so safe when you smell this. It's amazing. So we're gonna put that on there. And that is it. You just need to, whenever you're trying to get power from any kind of crystal grid or any kind of visual activation, you just need to look at it for about 60 seconds. That's it. There's not a lot that you need to do. You don't need to stare at it or um, you don't need to necessarily do mantras or meditate on it or anything like that. You just need to look at it long enough to absorb the collective color and power and energy from synthesizing 
all these crystals together, all these colors together, the sprays with it, it's everything combined. Plus, because I'm working with Metatron, he is putting energy into these. So these are highly effective ways for you to get a very, uh, get a benefit without putting in much effort, right? This grid, I'm going to take a picture of it. It's going to be on my website at orangelightenergy.com. So you can look at it. You can download it anytime you want, anytime you're going to go and have an interview, anytime you're about to have a tough conversation with a family member. Look at this for 60 seconds before you go and do that. Get that energy. Align your chakras. All right. That's everything I have for you today. I love you all. I hope you have a very good day, and I hope it's filled with empowered communication. Bye-bye.